Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to Democracy for America's DFA Dialer program. My name is Ruby Reed, and I'm the Member Engagement Manager here at DFA. I'm so happy to see so many progressive activists from all across the country joining this training. As you know, we're here to make get out the vote calls. So you and I know that Bernie Sanders' transformative campaign for president has energized tens of thousands of new grassroots leaders and welcomed millions of new people into the political process. But we also know that this moment is not just about one campaign or one person. It's about all of us all of us stepping up to organize, to lead campaigns, and to run for office ourselves. It's about doing this work up and down the ballot in all 50 states. It's about fighting income inequality, structural racism, and corporate control over our politics, our bodies, and our lives. And it's about building a more reflective democracy, where our country's elected bodies and our leaders reflect the great diversity, experience, and background of the constituents that they're supposed to represent. We are building a reflective democracy in places like Nevada, where we're calling right now, and in your hometown, too. To help us do that, I'm really pleased to introduce Annie Weinberg, our Electoral Director here at Democracy for America. She's going to tell us more about progressive champion Lucy Flores. Hey, Ruby, and hey, everyone. Thanks so much for being here and for doing uh, these critically important get-out-the-vote calls for progressive champion Lucy Flores running in Nevada uh, to help build the political revolution. So just a few words about Lucy. I think that she exemplifies why this political revolution and a reflective democracy, you know, as Bernie Sanders himself has said, and as Ruby said, this is not about one candidate or one campaign. This is about all of us. It's about all of us up and down the ballot, building people-powered campaigns in all 50 states to win. Uh, and Lucy is doing that right now with her critical competitive primary coming up this Tuesday, June 14th. Uh, so Lucy has spent her entire political career standing up for working families. She is not just a good vote um, or, you know, a reliable vote. She's a real organizer. She's a real leader. And she's proven that with her track record in the state legislature in Nevada. Uh, in, the state, uh, in the state house, she led the charge for better, fair testing in public schools. She fought for better protections for victims of domestic violence. She worked to raise the minimum wage. She spearheaded efforts to ensure schools teach comprehensive sex education and has been a real visionary leader in the work for reproductive rights. Uh, Lucy Flores is tough, and uh, she is a real organizer, and she hasn't backed down even when things are hard. That's also one of the reasons that she was one of Bernie Sanders' early endorsers. And uh, as she described it, she said that the reality of today's economic and social injustice weighs on Bernie's heart the way it does mine. That's, that's what she said when she rolled out her endorsement of him. And Bernie also ended up endorsing uh, Lucy Flores early on as well, calling her one of the most courageous people that he's ever met. So it's an honor to join you all in doing these calls and getting out the vote for Lucy in this very competitive primary. We know this could come down to a handful of votes. And we also know that these conversations work. These voter conversations, human-to-human -human interactions about what matters to you and why someone should get out to the polls and... Um, and participate, this is some of the most effective ways uh, to welcome new people into the political process and to make sure that folks actually show up and, um, and vote. So these calls are effective. Your conversations are really important. Lucy is an amazing progressive champion, and I'm excited that we're going to get to build this political revolution together. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ruby for some tips on how to have the most effective calls possible. Awesome. Thank you so much, Annie. So after this training is over, you're going to log in on this very page that you're watching the video on right now. So you'll log in at democracyforamerica.com slash DFA dialer. And when you log in on that page, you're going to be able to preview the script on the very next page. But for right now, I just wanted to give you three important highlights from the script. Number one, we're always confirming support levels for our candidates. So you want to make sure to mark in your script if the voter is supportive, undecided, or opposed. And number two, many voters vote by mail. So there might be instructions for voting by mail in your script versus voting at the polls. So just keep an eye out, and if folks are voting by mail, make sure that you give them the right instructions to be able to return their ballot. Finally, number three, when you confirm that a voter is supporting our candidates, you want to help walk them through a voting plan. 
So gaming out a plan drastically increases the likelihood that a voter will actually make it to the polls to vote. And it makes sense, right? If you game out a plan for your day, you're much more likely to actually accomplish the things that you thought you were going to do in the morning, right? So it works the same way with these voter calls. So make sure that when you're talking to folks and they're supporting Lucy, that you actually take the time to ask them questions like, what time do you think you'll go to the polls? Are you going to go in the morning before work? Uh, how do you think you'll get there? Is it close enough to walk or will you drive or take the bus? This way people can actually think about the practical steps that it's going to take to get to the polls and when they have time in their day to do it. And that's going to make it a lot more likely that they're able to get to the polls and vote for Lucy. One more reminder, we're only walking through the voting plan with people that we know are supporting Lucy. It's not our job to get our opponent's voters out to the poll. That's their, that's their job. We don't have to do that for them. So again, we're only going to be walking through that voting plan with confirmed supporters that we know are going to go out and vote for Lucy. So you're going to be able to review the full script before you make voter calls when you log in after this training. A couple of quick tips, have fun. You're talking to interesting people about a really exciting campaign and how it relates to what ca they care about in their community. So smile, connect with the voter, have fun with these calls. Second thing is it's okay to not know the answer to every question. So if someone asks a question and you don't know how to answer it or the topic's not covered in the materials that we've provided you, just tell the voter, I don't know the answer to that question, so I'm going to make a note and we'll get back to you with an answer. And we will. The campaign is really carefully reading all of your notes and following up with voters accordingly. So if someone has a question, it's perfectly fine to say, I don't know the answer, but we'll find out and let you know. And then just make sure you take really copious notes, which leads perfectly to quick tip number three, which is track everything. So making sure that you're writing out notes when that's necessary, but also you want to make sure that you are recording the results of every single call. Now the fourth piece of quick tips before we move on is to say the disclaimer at the end. Even though it might sound awkward, it's an important legal statement to let everybody know that these calls are paid for by Democracy for America. So please make sure that you do say that legal statement at the end of the script. All right, so now that we've gone through some of the highlights of the script, let's talk about what's going to happen next. So on the page that you're looking at with the script, I want you to scroll all the way to the very bottom of that page and click the Let's Get Started button. So click Let's Get Started, and then on the next screen, you should see that HubDialer is asking for your phone number. So you want to enter in the phone number that you want HubDialer to call you back on. Just enter the digits with no dashes or spaces or parentheses. Go ahead and enter in your phone number now, but please wait to click Call Me until this training is finished. After you click Call Me, the Hub Dialer is going to call you on your phone. And uh, for those of you who have used Hub Dialer before, everything else after this point is the same as you've done before. So you can feel free to drop off and start talking to voters. But if it's your first time using Hub Dialer, we'd love for you to stay on and you'll hear what is going to happen after you click that Call Me button. So within a few seconds of clicking that Call Me button, your phone's going to ring and you'll hear your agent ID number. So your agent ID tells the computer and the phone that you are the person who's making these calls. So type your agent ID number on your computer and stay on the phone. Don't hang up. The agent ID will be repeated until you type it in and click Start Calls. Now once you enter in your agent ID and click Start Calls, it can be really quick when you get your first live voter, so make sure that you're actually ready to start talking to people when you click Start Calls. You're going to hear some music and you'll see Please Wait on your computer screen. The music may last only just a few seconds or up to a minute. When you're connected to the first person, the hold music is going to stop and you'll hear a beep and you'll see the script and the voter's name pop up on your screen. So as soon as you hear that beep, it means the voter has already answered the phone and they've already said hello. So you've got to go right into the script as soon as you hear that beep. So you're just going to launch right into it. Hi, this is Ruby. I'm a volunteer with Democracy for America, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to pause at all when you hear that beep. Uh, because oftentimes voters will think nobody's there. You know, they said hello and nobody said anything, so then they hang up on you and that's sad. So the dialer is going to screen out most answering machines, but every once in a while an answering machine will sneak through. So if you do get connected to an answering machine, don't leave a message. Just click this is an answering machine at the top of your page and you'll automatically be moved back into the hold queue to take your next call. 
when you talk to voters, make sure that you record the results of every single call like we talked about. If the voter is not explicit, I want you to use your best judgment to indicate where you think they are on the spectrum of support. You're going to include all the details about your conversations in the notes box on the left side of the screen. The campaign is going to be following up with voters personally based on what you say in those notes, so make sure you capture everything that's relevant about the conversation. Once your call is complete, just say goodbye and, and wait for the person to hang up. You're not going to hang up your phone. Make sure that all the information that you gathered on the call has been entered correctly and thoroughly. Once the voter is hung up, you can stay on the screen as long as you need to to type in the results of the call before you move on to talking to the next person. Now when you're ready to talk to that next person, just click Next Call and you'll hear hold music and wait to talk to the next voter. When you don't want to take any more calls or if you just need to take a break during your shift, click This is my last call. This tells the computer to stop sending you voters to talk to. Then you can hang up your phone. If you're just taking a break, you can easily log back in and start taking calls when you're ready. This is also my number one troubleshooting tip for everyone. If you ever get stuck or you run into any trouble on the dialer or if you hang up your phone by accident, just log out and log back in again. That's going to solve most any problem that you might encounter. I wanted to let you all know that the dialer is going to run until 9 p.m. Pacific tonight. So you've got a long time to potentially be able to make these calls. and. This campaign is going to be open from 9 in the morning until 9 at night Pacific time between now and the election. So you are welcome to, now that you are trained and excited and amped, you can log in anytime between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Pacific. So we encourage everyone to stay on for at least an hour right now tonight because these are the most important voters. We really need to talk to them, and they are waiting to hear from you. So to thank you for your staying power on the calls, either Jim Dean, our chair, or Charles Chamberlain, our executive director, uh, one of them will call you personally to thank you if you're able to stay on for an hour or more today. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Again, every single one of these calls could be the margin of victory, so I really appreciate you making them, and I hope that you'll be able to stay on at least an hour. I know Jim and Charlie are really looking forward to personally thanking you for your volunteer time. So this concludes the training portion of tonight's DFA Dialer Shift. So if you're ready to start making calls, and we hope that you are, please go ahead and enter your name, email, phone, and zip code. And if it's your first time using Hub Dialer, check that box too. So you're going to enter in again, name, email, phone, and zip code, and then click Login.